Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm on the way to Heroes Con 2023 in beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina, but not so fast. Your boy got crushed by an 18-wheeler on the way there. 30 minutes outside of Charlotte, we were in bumper-to-bumper -bumper type traffic going 30 to 40 miles an hour. Your boy got rammed by John Wayne driving a giant wood truck on the interstate. I, I, I had nowhere for me to go. Left, it would have been the express lane. Right, it would have been into another 18-wheeler. I was crushed. Pulled off to the side of the road. Thank God the guy stopped and it wasn't a hit and run situation, but not a good way to start your day. John Wayne decided to get in my vehicle. He decided to get in the Honda Accord in the passenger seat. So to say I was a little on edge um, getting to Heroes Con is an understatement. But by God, we got there. We got there on Friday and look at this convention. Look, it's not wall to wall. It's not people so close in there you can't breathe. I felt like I was home. I felt like I was in comic book nirvana. Guys, this is the best comic book convention I've ever been to, no question. If you were a comic book guy or girl or person, this is the convention you go to. I was prepared this time. I had a wish list. There were books I was specifically looking for. Many of the dealers that were there, I knew them from the past at the Charlotte Minicon, put on by Rick Fortenberry, not uh, Heroes Aren't Hard to Find. I want to put that out there. This convention is put on by Heroes Are Not Hard to Find. So there it is. Guys, the big books were here. There was millions of dollars of books in there. ASM number one, and eh, no big deal. Batman number one, and eh, no big deal. Detective Comics 27, and eh, no big deal. That was the kind of stuff that was in there. Original art, crazy. So I come up to this booth. <laughs> this dude was on the phone. This was hilarious. There was a couple things he, I, I wanted from his wall, uh, specifically X-Men 4. Dude was like fighting somebody on the phone about payment. I was like, I don't want to do business with this guy. <laughs> Every single aisle I went down, I mean, it was just stacked. These type of um, little booths, like that would be like the best booth at some, some of the shows that I've been to. Not so fast. This is a side aisle for these guys. This booth right here, we will definitely be coming back to later in the video. We get a huge book in this, in this uh, booth later on. A lot of people there, uh, but not the crazy crowds, came up to this guy right here, highgradecomics.com. Holy crap. Multiple copies of Fantastic Four number one. Multiple copies of Hulk number one. I spotted a, um, a uh, GI combat book and he was actually putting them back up. I'm looking for some books specifically for my dad uh, for uh, GI uh, combat. He wanted like the haunted tank. First appearance of the haunted tank. I asked him, can I see the first appearance haunted tank? He was like, that's not the first appearance haunted tank. I made a mistake. I said, can I see the first cover appearance of Haunted Tank? And he was like, I, I, I don't think that's the first cover. Basically, he judged me unworthy of GI Combat, so I moved on. It was kind of funny. Like, I, I just made a mistake. and I, I he, he was like, no, nah, you, you, don't, you don't get to look at that. We kept going on. Um, huge vendors, huge walls. There's my boy Leo right there to the right. But yeah, so there was just vendors wall to wall. There was people there that like I've seen on YouTube, I've seen on the internet, seeing them in real in real life is kind of weird. Like whenever you see somebody that's uh, on the internet and then you see them in real life, it, it's like a it's like a weird thing. It's like I'm sure the people that saw me there were like that that guy. It's a it's a weird thing uh, seeing your your idols in uh, in real life. Kept on walking on the on your left here is all the artist alley all the uh, the creators, and there were some big, big creators there. Starenko, Claremont, um, Scotty Young, just to name a few. Crazy big guys there. This was a neat little uh, display here. Short Boxed was there. The dude running that booth was pretty cool. I really liked their setup, super clean. Um, I was really impressed by that short box. That was the, I, I didn't meet that guy. There was another guy there that was really cool. But like I said, I had a little wish list of books that I was looking for. And here they are. Green Lantern, 87, first John Stewart, ASM 50, first Kingpin, FF 20, first Molecule Man, Daredevil 1, first Daredevil, X-Men 4, first Scarlet Witch, Action Comics 434, uh, Superman Gets His Tooth Pulled, Lois Lane 106, 
uh, Curious Black, the races cover. Saga won. Strange Adventures 180, first Animal Man. Strange Adventures 205, first Dead Man. Watchmen number one, and Our Army at War 83, first Sergeant Rock. So I had a plan. You know, I was looking for specific books, and as we go through this convention, you'll see some of the same books keep popping up because there was a couple books in there. I, I think I looked at like every single copy in that room. Um, like I said, this this is the type of comic book convention I've always wanted. Now, the con the, the con prices were there. So there was definitely like a main row of vendors and then there was these little side alleys. This guy was hilarious. He was like a fast talking dude. He was like, this is my personal collection. I want you to show this. I want to do this. I want to, I want you to look at any book. Any book you want, any book you want, any at any time. And I was like, hold on a minute. I'm just a good old Southern boy. You're going to have to slow down your fast talking because I can't keep up with you. Apparently, this guy had a lot of good stuff. So he uh, pushed me in the way of the Action Comics booth. I'm looking for Action Comics 434. Not so good. Looking for Strange Adventures. Not so much. Kept on going. Uh, this guy here is apparently like an Instagram seller. Um, I think he like blocked me on Instagram. I'm not really sure why. Um, and then I think I realized that like after the fact, I was like, I think that guy blocked me on Instagram. <laughs> so this was his stuff. I, he had some pretty good stuff. I was looking in there. I tried to buy something from him on Instagram one time and I, I couldn't uh, message him. But, um, like I said, these little side alleys are kind of where you want to be buying. These main booth alleys, or the main booth uh, areas here on like the main drag, the big booths, I, I don't know like if that's really where you want to be buying. A lot of that stuff was like super overpriced. And to be honest with you, a lot of those guys have those big books because they made people overpay for things. Um, that's kind of why they've got the big stuff. They didn't get there with their ASM ones and their Detective Comics twenty sevens, uh, uh, you know, selling dollar books. This was an awesome Neil Adams book. I love that book. Kind of overpriced for me. Uh, this dude, uh, he was kind of kind of crazy. He, the, the guy was looking at a first appearance of uh, was it Little Dot? The book was like three thousand dollars. I that Golden Age uh, cartoon type books like Archie and Little Dot and you know there's like a whole market for that and I'm not in that market. I'm kind of more in like the Hulk 102 uh, Silver Age you know uh, first ongoing or yeah when Hulk comes back to his own story that's my kind of thing. This was a crazy booth there to your right like all those variant covers all those shiny foils that was cool. Um, but yeah I mean there were definitely deals in this place. At this point in the convention, I had not, you know, broken the ice. I hadn't bought anything. To be honest with you, I was just trying to get a lay of the land, trying to get a feel. Um, I did take a look at this ASM 50. I saw the price. I was like, hold up. But it was like, there was like pages missing or centerfold detached. There was like major issues. This guy was cool. Let me grab a a book off the wall. Of course, I asked for all those haters out there that say I don't ask. I asked uh, Captain America 100. That's a book that I really want. I thought the price on that was decent enough, but um, it just didn't present the way I wanted. The pages were kind of tanned. It's, it's, it's hard to get that book in that really white, crispy uh, cover. Uh, this guy had an X, uh, X-Men number four graded I really liked. But then I started getting into these Lois Lanes and get used to looking at this book because you're going to see this book a lot. That book was a that was kind of the price point I'm wanting to get this book at. Um, $100, but it was just too low a grade. I need that book in at least a mid-grade. Uh, just I want it to present nice. I love this show because it wasn't all the pop culture stuff. It wasn't all the Funko Pops. It wasn't the all these like art prints and stuff and the fake weapons. None of that was here. It was just straight up comic books. And I'm talking heat. Silver Surfer number four. Uh, well, I think this was like a six five, if I remember right. Book presented beautifully. This is one of the best comic book covers ever. $1,100. And this was really cool. This gentleman here, um, the behind the counter and then uh, the guy here in the foreground, 
he, uh, they recognized me, and I, I just felt honored that they said hello. They said, you're Sticky Goose, and I was like, that's me. The guy actually said, uh, he was like, you lost weight, and I was like, thanks for noticing. Uh, I really appreciated that. It was kind of weird to like know somebody has watched enough of my videos to see me like in my fat phase to like or from my, my skinny phase to my fat phase to my skinny phase again. I was like, dang, this is kind of crazy. Talking to people that have watched my stuff, it's like, it's an honor. Like, it's like, thank you. Any Anybody that goes out of their way to say hello, um, it, I mean, it really, it, I'm, I got chill bumps right now talking about this. And I, I, I did when I was there because it was just, it's just so nice um, that, that people would, would say hello and, and recognize me. Guys, this was the best booth of the day. This is an older couple from uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. They were Midwest nice. Dream Haven. I got real close with these folks. They started telling me about their son who's an actor. Uh, he's on off Broadway right now. Just... Just short box full of stuff. Like I was like, well, I might just go dig in this short box. I was like, you know, there might be some stuff in there. I saw that first Dead Man, and I was like, hold up, wait a minute. They got Batman in here, and not just any Batman. Uh, Return of uh, Two Face Batman, uh, First Reaper, classic Neil Adams cover Batman, Bernie Wrightson story Batman. And I'm just like paging through the short box, and I was like, oh my god. Stuff was like crazy overpriced, but then there was stuff that was crazy underpriced. The lady there in the corner, I'm, I'm like making friends with her. I'm asking her, I'm like, uh, is this your hus husband's uh, collection or is this yours? And she was like, oh, that, that's my husband's. And I was like, so that means it's your collection. She kind of laughed um, and we instantly became friends. She starts telling me about you know, how she's met George R. R. Martin and how Neil Gaiman has come to her store. Then we started talking about Sandman and our love of Sandman. And then this dude that was like on cocaine or like uh, on a lot of coffee comes over. I'm like looking at this ASM 300. And he's like, how much is on that? How much is on that ASM 300? And I was like, I don't know, dude. I'm just looking at it. And he was like, okay, okay. I'm going to look through this box. I'm going to look through this box. I'm, I, I, yeah. And I was like, it was a different level of energy that I was not, I wasn't there. That's an awesome Daredevil first Frank Miller on Daredevil. A little bit overpriced, but we got some good stuff from this booth. Stick around at the end to see the haul. You're going to want to see the haul on this. Um, so I got away from the coffee addicted man and I'm heading down Artist Alley. And honestly, I don't really do that when I go to these shows, but I wanted to. I, I got to see Ed Pisker. What a cool guy. He had these like big sunglasses, like those old people that got out of the eye doctor type glasses. He was really cool. I was like, dude, I love your art. And he was like, thanks, man. Thanks, man. Kind of like that Post Malone um, um, meme that's been going around. I saw a lot of people like bringing, like dragging around like short boxes and other comics. And I was like, man, I should. this was like the show that I should have traded. I should have mentioned that in the beginning. I didn't bring anything to trade. Saw this Saga number one, 9.8, 350 bucks, first print. Um, I was like, uh, okay, uh, would you take 300? Sold. I was like, uh, okay. I mean, that's a $500 book. <laughs> like, I, I, I mean, I was like, here's my credit card. Here, here's the money, $300, let's do it. I was like, deal. Next came up to Comic Baron. He calls me out. Uh, he's like, hey, Comic Baron is, uh, if you don't know, he's very prominent at the Charlotte uh, convention, uh, the Comic Con that happens quarterly, I think, or every every four months. I can't remember. I've gotten some awesome books from him. I got my Hulk 181. I got my huge run of X-Men. He had another Lois Lane copy. He had First Dead Man, both books I'm super interested in. Both a little overpriced. He... He probably, you know, would have done a deal with me. He he was moving. He was shaking. Um, the gentleman to his left came over and introduced himself to me and said that he watched my videos. Comic Baron said he has watched some of my videos. I was like, man, I, I was just honored that so many people w supported me. Um, this case was crazy. Like, I mean, X-Men 1, FF48, ASM 1. I mean, I was like... What is who are people buying this? Uh, this Iron Fist one, um, I looked at it, it didn't have a price on it. I was trying to see what 
he would do on that, but it was it was a high grade copy of that book, but it was just a little overpriced for me. Um, those Iron Fist keys are like really cheap right now. Uh, that was a nice uh, Nick Fury book. So yeah, I mean at this point I've already got a I bought a couple things. It, it this is one of those shows that you need to spend multiple days there. Many of these shows, you know, you can do. Um, you know, do them in one day, not this one. There is too much stuff in there, too many deals to be made, too many huge books to see. I mean, this is like, this, this convention made me feel like the comic book community is live and well. We're here, we're, we're alive, we're, (laughs) we're still collecting. This dude's wall was crazy. Holy golden age, Batman. This was insane. This was the nicest copy of First Animal Man, Strange Adventures number 180 I have ever seen. Um, he wanted $650 for this book, which, to be honest, it, it, it may have been worth that because I don't think I've ever seen, I don't think I've ever held a Silver Age book in that type of condition. Like, I mean, obviously I've seen them in like slabs, but like, to see one in person like that, to see what it looked like when somebody bought it um, back in '60 whatever, it was that was crazy. This dude, this is my dude right here. Uh, we talked about short box. We talked about um, you know eBay and whatnot and the competition. And then he kind of talked about what short box is offering with um, their site. I don't know. I might have to. I might have to start buying some stuff off of there. He also gave me a free T-shirt. Shout out to that dude. Um, just just slabs everywhere. I mean, to to go through all these raws, I mean, it would take it would take hours to just go through one person's booth like thoroughly. And when you're there, I, I mean, you know, you want to take it all in. You want to see everything. And you know, you can tell a lot by a dealer by their wall books. And what I mean by that is, you know, if their prices are crazy on their wall books, then I don't even mess with them. But if they have really good wall books and their their prices are like close to fair market value, you know, I'm I'm there. I'm going to look at their stuff. And you know, there's levels to this. Like a dealer with, you know, the FF ones and the Hulk ones and the stuff. I'm like I I mean, I, that's like out of my league. That's not I can't I'm not there yet or if I'll ever be. You know, I'm I'm kind of the mid mid grade to low grade silver age guy, the mid grade to high grade bronze age guy. That's that's who I am. I'm not the the Hulk one guy and the 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 you know uh, journey into mystery eighty three guy. I, I want to be, but I'm just not not there. This is one of my favorite dealers in this area, TNT Comics. This is the guys that I did that huge deal with for my giant size X Men one. Love these guys. There were several things there, specifically this Watchmen one. I want Watchmen one in a nine point eight. I don't necessarily care about the single issues, um, just to collect them. I'm I'm good. I have the absolute. I, I just want number one in a nine point eight. That was not a nine point eight. They had a nice copy of this Lois Lane one hundred six. They were wanting one hundred and seventy five dollars. Looking back on that. That was probably right. That was that was probably right. Here to your left is the Inner Geek. They put on the Lexington Lexington Comic Con. I did a video with him, him showing his incredible collection. He was the multi million dollar uh, New York Comic Con collection guy. If you watch that video, at this point, I'm just like, I'm overwhelmed. I mean, I, I'm I'm kind of settling in. I was definitely overwhelmed in the beginning, but at this point, I was kind of settling in. Everybody was super cool. People were coming up to me saying they watched my videos. The dealers were super friendly. I mean, this this was this was an awesome convention. And especially after getting like uh ran over by a truck like earlier that day by John Wayne, like to come and like have this awesome show. I mean, it just it just brings a smile on my face looking back on this because it's like I've had so many neg- negative experiences at Comic Cons and honestly, I didn't even want to go to this. And man, I want to thank the people that told me, specifically uh, Mr. Walker and Digger Jim. They were the guys that kind of were like, hey, you need to like go to Heroes Con. And I'm like, okay, I'll give it a try. $35 entry fee, pretty steep. 
Um, and it's a three hour drive for me. So, I mean, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a time investment, money investment, gas, food, but man, it was worth it. Um, I got some great stuff, had a lot of fun and, um, it was just it was just a treat to see what a real comic book convention could be. There were I like wings of this place. I mean, I don't even I don't think I saw it all. I mean, I was there Friday. I got there late, obviously, because of the car crash. But I mean, you know, I mean, I I don't even think I saw the whole convention center to see everything. This is a three day thing. Super nice, uh, Fantastic Four annual um, six first Nathaniel Richards. That's a good book. A book you probably want to pick up. Guys, let's get on back to the house. Let's talk about this haul. We got some major wish list books. CGC was there. I think they were doing their signature series. Guys, we're back here. We picked up the Batman and Robin from our friends at Dreamweaver Comics in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Look at the quality of this book. So I got this book and the next two books for $350. They were priced at $400 total. He had a $200 price tag on this. I got these three books for $350. This book alone, in this kind of condition, I mean, to me, that's a $300 book. I, I, I was no hesitation. I mean, to me, that's one of like, the best Batman covers from that era. Oversized issue, that one and this one. This book has got a crazy amount of first first well not crazy amount of first appearances but just a lot of stuff going on in this issue it's a bernie wrightson story it's a first appearance of the reaper there are um kids dressed up in uh marvel hero costumes like spider-man and thor uh best i remember paging through this i mean this is such a cool book then you have like this incredible Neil Adams cover with the freaking Grim Reaper on the front. I mean, this book and that in the Batman and the the Two-Face book at 8.0s maybe? I mean, I don't know. I mean, they could be higher after a press. And then they had this Mr. Miracle book. Now, this book's got a little bit of dirt on it. You can see in the uh in the lettering, but still super high high grade book. First appearance of Mr. Miracle um, so much that they can do with this character. And I still need to read one of the uh, recent Mr. Miracle runs. Just Jack Kirby goodness right here. I mean, there's no other way to put it. This is just Jack Kirby back at DC. This is, you know, if, if you want to talk fourth world and bringing in the new gods and all that stuff, like this is how they could tie all that stuff in and this is this was such a special thing as as I was kind of sharing um, stories with this this couple here. This is them in the '90s. She had made a scrapbook of all the the writers and artists that had come through their store. It was just it was just incredible to to see that talk to them. What a treat! This this is a, a group of books I got for free. Tales of the Jedi number one. Got that for free. X-Men Adventures 3. Basically, this guy had a packet of books. It was one of the dealers. It was the guy who looked at the ASM uh, 50, I think. They had started a YouTube channel, and they had a QR code put on the top of these free books. You get a package of free books if you subscribed to their channel. I thought that was a pretty good idea. Saga number one, 9.8 white pages. First appearance of Marco, Elena, Hazel, Prince Robot. The gang's all here. If you haven't read this, Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples' masterpiece, you need to. It's currently ongoing right now. They still haven't finished up the story. I just wanted this book in a 9.8. Surprising this book got a 9.8 if you looked at the spine. A couple indentions on that, but it has a white spine, so you're not going to get any kind of color breaks. Kind of suffers from some bad Newton rings back there on the back. Look at the price tag. Do you see that? $700 at one point, this book. So they've been sitting on this forever. This Ultimate Comics out of Raleigh and Durham. They they, they had some big books. I should have looked more at their, um, at their setup. But like I said, there was just so much to see. 
They had Omnibus there too. I totally forgot to mention this. There would just be dealers with like big boxes of discounted Omnibus. This is Daredevil by Charles uh, Soul. This is the first printing of this Omnibus. This book's out of print. I think it's actually coming back into print or it may already be back in print. But this is the first printing. It's supposed to be one of the best Daredevil runs there is. I mean, yeah, it's got a couple corner dings. I mean, it's it's a little bit beat up, but like a uh, over half price or half off omnibus. Yes, please. So this was the big deal. Um, this this was the big one. Uh, this is Jason Todd uh, as as Red Hood. This first Jason Todd as Red Hood, Batman. One hundred fifty dollar price tag on this. This is high grade. It's not a nine point eight. Uh, there's there's a color breaking spine tick right there above the the cape, but this is one of the dealers I did not show. I talked about how we would come back to them. Everything he had on his wall was thirty percent off. I said, let me hit, let me get this book, and I'll buy this book. Avengers number four, first Silver Age appearance of Captain America. Captain America joins the Avengers. Four point cream to off white pages, I believe. Presents beautifully, newly encapsulated. I mean, this is a legendary book. Um, Stanley Story, iconic Jack Kirby cover. Look at those faces. That Steve Rogers face and Jack Kirby face. My gosh. It's a legendary book. Got this book and the Batman Red Hood, $1,300. Both books. This book at one time was going for 2000 to $2,500. This book has not crashed in value like so many of the Bronze Age books. This book is holding its value, and I'm honored to have it in the collection. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If any point in time you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Hope you take care.